continuing with chapter five from the birth of explicit movement and the title of this chapter is one conversation can open a door and i i really love this because you never know right what conversations can really actually be a divine conversation um, that can change your life or, or put you set you on a, on a certain direction conversations with people can be kind of random at times but you never know when god might actually have orchestrated a special time of speaking to someone uh, to help guide you in, in a certain direction. So um, there's been a lot of those in this in the journey of explicit movement, but I do want to highlight one, a couple actually. Um, I, you know, I, as many of you know from previous chapters, um, we had I had a purity camp uh, with with my kids at our small church um, that started the whole idea of. Uh, you know, just having a burden for this whole area of purity with the kids. And I remember having a conversation um, after I had done my uh, second purity camp with, with uh, my junior hires, and I had this conversation with Pastor Alan Cardenas, and he was just, you know, randomly saying, hey, Michelle, you know, how's life, you know, how's ministry going? And I just told him about the purity camp that I had done with the junior hires and some testimonies from that. And his eyes got really big, you know, and he says, wow, Michelle, you know, tell me more about it. Um, and so we had a little more chat. A, a month later, after the conversation, I found myself in a meeting with Alan and other uh, pastors and leaders from the TOW, uh, Transform Our World Hawaii, a group of, of leaders. And Pastor Alan had interrupted the meeting at one point and asked Pastor Kel Chinen, who was leading the meeting, to to, to listen to my testimonies about the purity camp I had just done. And I was ho completely horrified because I I really had no um, clue that, that he was going to do that in that moment. But I shared, and that led, a, led to a discussion that led to um, the pastors asking me to do an island-wide conference on purity be, to just support and help pastors and parents. And so it was just interesting that the whole idea of explicit was birthed out of that conversation around the table. But it started with that first conversation I had with Pastor Allen, and it was just a time of sharing, you know, what's been going on with my life. And who would have known that everything started to unfold from that moment on, you know, and, and, and it's just amazing. And another great story that I'll never forget was I had met Pastor Joshua Cole of First Assembly of God. He's a youth pastor for the very first time and wanted to tell him about the idea of explicit movement and what he thought of it. You know, would he want to be a part of this new first event of that I was planning? And we started talking and he was just an amazing young man. So, so friendly and so joyful. And um, in the conversation, he says, well, Michelle, what are you going to call this? And I said, I don't know. You know, uh, he says, well, you cannot call it Purity Conference because then no, no high school would want to come. And I thought, yeah, that's true. You know, we need something a little more snazzy, you know, something that's catchy and, and edgy and something that, you know, the kids would, would, would pay attention to. And so he said, uh, I said, well, Josh, do you have any ideas, you know? And he said to me, uh, what about explicit? And I thought, oh, I like that, Josh. Maybe let's, let's use that. And the rest is history. It ended up being the uh, title that we used for the first conference, Explicit, and then it changed to Explicit Movement, which is the name of our nonprofit now. And so... You know, I, I just owe it all to the Lord and to Josh Coe for our name. And um, I know our name is, can be a little edgy, and you need to be careful when you Google the word explicit because that could literally lead you to things that um, are not, that does, does not have to do with God's purity. But it is it is catchy, right? And, and the young young people tend to really like that. So anyway, that that was just some 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 ideas or some some reflections I have. And so I'd like for you to think about certain conversations that you've had in the past or even recently that kind of stand out to you and just pray about it. You know, journal it. You never know what, what God will will do. Um, another time uh, that God led to an amazing, um, just a miracle to, in my heart in, in the time at the time 
was uh, when Explicit had just begun. It was the second year. We had just done our first event. And there, a lot of the pastors were saying, hey, Michelle, you know, we don't know what, how to navigate the LGBTQ issues, you know, with the youth and with our church. And can you uh, help us? And so that was my heart. Yeah, I wanted to help. And so I started to call different ministries on the mainland. You know, maybe some people can come to Hawaii and talk about these issues. Meanwhile, uh, I had a, a meeting with a small group. I think it was maybe two or three other church leaders one day. And I was just telling them about about the burden that I had trying to find someone who could equip Hawaii, equip Hawaii leaders in this whole area. And one of them was was a gentleman, um, Dave, and he was, it was just amazing. He says, well, you know, I have, uh, my, my roommate is Eddie, and he actually does a, a whole program, a whole ministry on healing, and it covers, you know, LGBT issues. And I was like, oh, really? Well, tell me more, you know? And he says, well, and he, he's also uh, connected to um, to Living Waters uh, ministry. And I, I thought, oh, I, I'm familiar with that. Very credible ministry, uh, Desert Streams, Living Waters ministry. And so I thought, that's great because here, you know, I, I don't know Eddie yet at the time, but I, I love the ministry of Desert Desert Streams, Living Waters. And so if Eddie's been trained in that, I already have a sense of trust, you know, with what he teaches. And so long story short, I met with Eddie and John and this guy named Barnabas and who is in the ministry. And after that, we had a, um, we decided to have a equipping for pastors on the island of Oahu. And it ended up where we had two meetings of equipping and about 120-ish uh, leaders showed up at this and they were just so raving about uh, John and Eddie and Barnabas and their presentation and how it was so powerful and so equipping and um, it was almost like finding treasures in my own backyard. <laughs> you know, I didn't know that here were these three uh, wonderful men who who were so gifted and so experienced and in this issue and they were teachers. They all could teach, you know, about it and uh, equip people. And so that now they're part of our team. Eddie and John are, and our team is growing. Um, in the LGBT areas too. So, you know, it's just amazing how God will orchestrate um, different different situations in your life that will lead to open doors, that will lead to uh, direction, that will lead to uh, opportunities that you never knew that God had in store for you. Um, and I just want to close with really partnering with the Holy Spirit um, whenever you're having conversations with people. Um, I try to remember many times when I'm talking with people, Lord, is there anything that you want to tell them? Is there any word of encouragement that you would want me to share, you know, on your behalf or what, Lord, what, what is on your heart for this person? And just being open to the Holy Spirit to giving you thoughts or encouraging words or scripture verse or um, a picture or a vision of how God sees them and um, just sending. And if you, you get a picture or a vision, you know, I can ask the Lord silently, you know, Lord, what does this mean? What, what, how do you want me to encourage this person in front of me? You know, and, and have, have those kind of conversations with the Lord, um, you know, when you're, when you're with someone and you, you'd be surprised how many times the Lord will plant a thought or, or a message in your heart to just encourage them. Um, I had this one situation where um, I was talking with uh, this this guy who I never really met before. I'm not sure if I shared this before, but he 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 we were just talking, started getting to know each other at a family gathering. He was a neighbor of my aunt, and we were talking. And I was asking the Lord, you know, how do you see this person? And he, I didn't know he, if he was a Christian or not. But anyway, this thought, this idea, this came into my mind. I saw Jesus in a um, a deep sea diving suit, which is kind of a kind of a funny picture, right? Of Jesus dressed like that, but he was deep sea diving. He was looking for treasure at the bottom of the ocean, and in his vision, Jesus saw a, a treasure box, you know, like those pirate treasures, you know, at the bottom of the ocean. And I said, Lord, what does this mean? You know, and I felt the thoughts coming into my mind. Tell this young man that he is such a treasure to me that I would search the deepest oceans to find him. 
He's so precious. So I, I, I kind of weaved into that conversation and I said, you know, I just want to tell you, excuse me, but I just want to tell you this one thing I just got. Like, um, sometimes I, I ask the Lord if he has any word of encouragement for somebody. And I just want to say, share what I got, this picture that I got of you or a message for you. And I don't know if, if this means anything, but, and I shared the vision. I shared the vision of Jesus, deep sea diving and what that, and I told this gentleman that you, the Lord just, I felt, I felt, said the Lord Tommy that you are such a treasure to him that he would see the dive into the deepest depths of every ocean to find you because you're that precious to him. And I said, I don't know if that means anything to you, but does that mean anything to you? And this gentleman got, his eyes got really big and he said, Michelle, my passion, my number one passion in life is deep sea diving. In fact, I travel all around the world whenever I can. He was in the military. Whenever I can to deep sea dive for treasure at the bottom of the ocean. That's what I do. And he said, in fact, in a week or two, I'm going to be going to this other place around the world to do just that, to deep sea dive. And and he was so flabbergasted, so in sigh. And so I said to him in that in response, you know what? I did not know that about you. But God knows you. He knows everything about you. And so I believe he gave me that vision and that word of encouragement to let you know he loves you and that you're special to him in a way that you could totally relate. And he looked at me and he said, you know, Michelle, I used to go to church when I was little. I think I'm going to start going to church again. <laughs> I said, yes, you should. You know, God, God is drawing you near to him. He's drawing you. He's encouraging you. And so anyway, I don't know what happened, you know, after that conversation. I never saw him again, never talked to him again. But I, my prayer was that that conversation hopefully was a God moment for him, that God was able to just use me in that word of encouragement, you know. And so just be open. Be open to the Holy Spirit for, for thoughts from heaven, for thoughts from the Lord's heart, um, for words of encouragement. And I want to just end by sharing this, this scripture that I that I end with um, in chapter 5. And, you know, just, just to remind you that in throughout the Bible, there were conversations that Jesus had or people in the Old Testament had that changed lives. Just think of the one conversation Jesus had with a Samaritan woman or the one conversation that Moses had with the burning bush with God. One conversation can change your life and can point to your purpose and destiny. So Ephesians 4.29, this is a great reminder for us. And guard your speech. Never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth. But instead, let your words become beautiful gifts that encourage others. Do this by speaking words of grace to help them. And so as we have conversations with people, if you have conversations with people, be mindful, be be connected to the Lord, and be mindful of being an encouragement, speaking positive and encouraging words to, for, to people, because you never know that might be just the word of God to them through you. So God bless you, everyone. I hope that encouraged you. I look forward to seeing you next week uh, for, for Chapter 6. Please get your copy of the book, Explicit of the Birth of Explicit Movement, Discover Keys to Fulfilling Your Purpose. You can get this at our website, explicitmovement.org, and get all the juicy um, juicy details for, from each chapter and some great devotionals as well. So bless you, everyone. Love you, and see you next week.